So these next video clips will make you question everything. And remember, this is for entertainment purposes only. Let's check them out. Number 20. Mysterious Mineral Found in the Dead Sea In 2021, it was announced that a mysterious mineral was found in the Dead Sea. Now this is a mineral that we thought belonged only in the vastness of space, particularly in meteorites hurtling through the cosmos. It was surprising that some had been found right here on Earth. This mysterious mineral is known as alabogdenite. Essentially, it's a rare find, something that until recently, scientists believed was exclusive to meteorites. After all, alabogdenite was first identified in meteorites about two decades ago. It's a phosphide mineral, which basically means it contains phosphorus in a unique negative oxidation state, something that doesn't naturally occur on our planet. Naturally, scientists were intrigued. See, and them saying that scares me because now I'm thinking, okay, this does our planet doesn't contain this, and now it's here. How will this alter our planet? And I'm also thinking at the same time, what else could have been, what like what type of living or biologic organism could have been on there that is here on this planet now? You know what I'm saying? That kind of makes me nervous. Intrigued by this find. But what makes this so fascinating is that this mineral is an indicator of high pressure, something we typically associate with the extreme conditions in space. Finding it in Earth's rock suggests there's still so much we don't know about the processes shaping our world. The presence of a mineral previously thought to be exclusive to space rocks on Earth raises some compelling questions. How did it get here? Was it part of a meteorite that integrated with Earth's materials? Or does its existence hint at unknown high-pressure conditions in Earth's past? Or perhaps, was it brought to Earth by a friendly visitor from another planet? Well, for now, we can only speculate. Before we go on, like this video, Alan Hills 84001. Discovered in 1984 in Antarctica, the Allen Hills 84001 meteorite, weighing about 4.2 pounds, is an ancient Martian rock estimated to be about 4 billion years old. This meteorite is notably significant because it's believed to contain traces of organic carbon, sparking a major scientific debate about the potential for life on Mars. After all, there shouldn't be any traces of this element on the planet, or at least, that's what we believe. And so, the crux of the debate lies in the origin of this organic carbon. Some scientists argue that it could result from abiotic processes, such as volcanic activity or impact events on Mars. These processes do not involve living organisms, but can create organic compounds. On the other hand, there is a possibility that this carbon could be remnants of ancient Martian life forms. What fuels this debate further is the presence of specific features within the meteorite, initially interpreted by some researchers as fossilized remains of microbial life. However, the interpretation of study results still differs. Some critics argue that the features and the organic compounds found could have been formed through non-biological processes. What's more, there is the possibility of contamination after the meteorite landed on Earth, which also complicates interpretations. Whether the organic carbon is a sign of life or not, we are yet to know. Number eight. And see, you, you, people be wondering why our focus or one of our focuses is still Mars. I feel like they have information to believe that life is either present there or the conditions are still like favorable for us to have life there. You know what I mean? Us to be able to transition from this planet there. But it's a it's a reason they're not telling us that keeps Mars like in our focus as trying to either inhabit that planet or, or continuously go there to, to locate the life that's there. Team, Black Knight Satellite. If you haven't heard about this yet, the Black Knight Satellite is one of the most compelling examples of UFO and extraterrestrial activities on our planet. Its story began in the 1950s. It was around this time that various reports of an unidentified object in orbit emerged, quite unlike anything known at the time. Remember, this was during the early days of satellite technology when human-made satellites were a relatively new phenomena. Somehow, the narrative of the Black Knight gained momentum in the 1960s when an object was photographed during a space mission. This image fueled speculations and conspiracy theories. People started to believe that this unidentified object was an ancient alien technological marvel observing Earth. However, upon closer scrutiny, 
Most evidence supporting the Black Knight satellite theory can be explained through more mundane explanations. For instance, the photographs from the 1960s were later identified as a thermal blanket lost during a space mission. Many signals and objects initially attributed to the Black Knight have since been explained as either space debris or natural phenomena. Despite the lack of scientific oh. evidence supporting its existence, the Black Knight satellite story persists. Number 17. Little Green Men In 1967, Jocelyn Bell Burnell and Anthony Hewish stumbled upon a groundbreaking discovery in the world of astronomy. The duo detected unusual regular pulses of radio waves emanating from a distant star, which had never been observed before. These pulses were so precise and consistent that they sparked quite an unusual speculation. Could these signals be a form of communication from an intelligent alien civilization? The team humorously nicknamed these signals LGM-1, which stood for Little Green Men 1, reflecting the notion that these signals might somehow be an attempt at contact with extraterrestrial beings. This idea, while incredibly exciting, was also quite controversial and far from the conventional scientific hypotheses of that time. However, as they delved deeper, a more plausible explanation came to light. These signals were identified as coming from a pulsar, a rapidly spinning neutron star. Neutron stars are the dense remnants of massive stars that have undergone supernova explosions. As these stars spin, they emit beams of electromagnetic radiation from their magnetic poles. When these beams sweep past Earth, they're perceived as regular pulses of radio waves. Despite this, many continue to believe that some of these signals were deliberately sent by alien life forms. Number 16. I don't blame them. <laughs> this guy, I, I, absolutely. You see something like that for the first time? What is your mind going to think? Yeah. They're trying to contact us. Now, what I would have been like is okay, but we still need to be cautious because we don't know if they're trying to warn us or they're communicating to see if something's there so they can come attack us. Like, I'd have been hesitant in that aspect, but yeah, I could totally see how they get that. The wow signal. Good old On a wow summer signal. night in 1977, an Ohio State University radio telescope known as the Big Ear picked up a signal that would become one of the most intriguing puzzles in the search for extraterrestrial intelligence, the WOW signal. The WOW signal was a strong, narrow-band radio signal detected on August 15, 1977. What made it stand out was its duration and intensity. The signal lasted for 72 seconds and appeared to have the hallmarks of an interstellar origin. Jerry Emmon, astonished by the signal's properties, famously wrote WOW on the printout, giving the signal its name. However, the origin of the WOW signal remains a subject of speculation and debate. Some propose it was a transmission from an extraterrestrial civilization, considering it matched the expected characteristics of an intentional communication from deep space. This hypothesis is bolstered by the fact that the signal appeared to come from the direction of the constellation Sagittarius near the center of our galaxy, a location with a high potential for hosting advanced civilizations. But as with many such phenomena, there are alternative explanations. Some scientists have suggested that the signal could have resulted from natural space events or even reflections of Earth origin signals from space debris. Despite numerous attempts to detect it again, the WOW signal remains a unique event, not observed since that night. Number 15. The Moai of Easter Island The Moai of Easter Island presents one of the most enigmatic and fascinating- I don't care how many times they show that to me, bro. That's always gonna look strange and weird to me, man. Like, even the history surrounding it, and I know the history of it, it just, it just looks like, yeah, no, <laughs> no thank you. Getting archeological mysteries of our time. Initially, when these colossal stone statues were first encountered by Europeans in the 18th century, their existence on a remote and seemingly resource-poor island was incredibly perplexing. The Moai, predominantly known for their oversized heads, are found across Easter Island, known locally as Rapa Nui, and have long been a subject of speculation. Over the years, our understanding of these statues and the civilization that created them has grown significantly. Archaeologists have determined that the Rapa Nui people carved the Moai between the years 1250 and 1500. Contrary to popular belief, we know who created these heads, but the question of how and why remains. These big heads were crafted from volcanic tuff, a type of compressed volcanic ash and basalt, and were then transported around the island, 
a feat that has led to various theories about how such a task was accomplished. One prevalent theory suggests that the statues were moved upright in a walking fashion using ropes. Another theory posits that they were laid on wooden sleds and rolled along on logs. These monumental efforts indicate that the Moai held great significance for the Rapa Nui people, possibly serving religious or ancestral symbolic purposes. However, the question that remains somewhat elusive is why the Rapa Nui people created such a large number of these statues. Over 900 Moai have been documented, which oh. is an astonishing number considering the island's limited resources and small population. Some theories suggest that the construction of these statues was a form of ancestor worship, or a display of clan prestige and competition among the different groups on the island. However, some believe these heads were created with the aid of creatures that aren't from our planet. Number 14. Omo just watching them try to move that thing made me tired, bro. <laughs> made me exhausted. Just seeing them attempt to move one. And you talking about there's several hundred of them? Bro. Oamua. Oumuamua is one of the most mysterious visitors that have passed through our planet. Initially, it was identified as an interstellar comet. However, its unusual characteristics soon set it apart from typical comets or asteroids. One of the most intriguing aspects of Oumuamua was its shape. Observations suggested it was unusually elongated, much more than any known asteroid or comet in our solar system. This unique shape led to various hypotheses about its origin and nature, like for instance, if it's a spacecraft controlled by alien creatures. Another curious feature was its acceleration. Oumuamua seemed to speed up as it traveled away from the sun, a behavior that's somewhat typical for comets, which accelerate due to the outgassing of volatile materials. However, there was no visible evidence of outgassing from Oumuamua, which made its acceleration quite baffling. Think of this outgassing as something similar to what a jet plane lets out as it zooms across the sky. Basically speaking, Oumuamua seemed like it was being powered by a force within. These peculiarities led to speculations that Oumuamua could be an artificial object, perhaps an alien probe. However, most scientists believe that natural explanations, although not yet fully understood, are more likely. Number 13. The Dropa Stones The Dropa Stones are yet another captivating enigma from the annals of purported ancient mysteries. Initially, the story of the Dropa Stones emerged in the 20th century, supposedly involving a series of circular stone disks found in China, which were said to date back thousands of years. The narrative around these stones is filled with claims of incredible origins and undecipherable messages. According to the story, these stones were discovered in the 1930s by a Chinese archaeologist named Chi Pute in the Bayan Karaula Mountains on the border between China and Japan. And they look like, they look like discs, CDs, remember CDs? They look like records. They look like they could have been wheels. You know what I mean? For a cart or something? I, I don't know what this could have been. Uh, I see several different things. That each stone disc was said to be about a foot in diameter, with the grooves spiraling outwards from the center, which supposedly contained a series of tiny hieroglyphics. When studied in the 1960s, these hieroglyphs were translated to tell an astonishing story of beings from another planet, the Dropa, see? who crash landed on Earth. These beings were described as having diminutive, frail bodies and large heads, and the stones reportedly chronicled their struggles on Earth. However, the integrity of the Dropa Stone story is incredibly dubious. There's a significant lack of credible documentation or physical evidence to support the existence of these stones or the- So, information on a disc. And that just goes to show you how we've evolved it over time. You know what I mean? Now, ours- we got to a point where they started making music on them, but all of them have some form of information on them. So that's crazy to see that evolve like that. You know what I mean? And it could, it could possibly not have been intentional and, and ours could have possibly not have come from that, but to try to connect it and look at it and see it from a different angle. Yeah, it looks like it to me. Narrative surrounding them. A Russian scientist found that the granite disks contained high concentrations of cobalt and other metals, making them incredibly hard. This would have made it difficult for ancient people to carve the small characters on the disks. Most accounts about the Dropa Stones and their supposed alien connection trace back to a book published in the 1970s, considered more fiction than fact by mainstream researchers. Number 12. Russian Kid from Mars 
Bariska Kiprianovich is a young Russian who's been stirring up quite a buzz with his extraordinary claims. Imagine being a kid and telling everyone you used to live on Mars. It sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But for Bariska, this is his reality, or so he claims. From a very young age, Bariska started telling his parents about his life on Mars. He talks about Mars suffering a catastrophic war, advanced Martian technology, and even space travel. And his tales didn't stop at Mars. He also shared insights about ancient civilizations on Earth, like lost continents and hidden knowledge, which is quite impressive for someone his age. While it's a story that captures our imagination and makes us wonder about the mysteries of the universe, we really can't take Bariska's claims as the immediate truth. It's possible that Bariska's knowledge about space is just fueled by his wild imagination, but several believe that just like what he claims, he really is from another planet. Number 11. I would believe him. I ain't gonna lie to you. I'm gonna, I believe him. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Some kind of way. I don't know. And I think they need to figure it out because he could... He could be the one that has the answers. He could be the one. That might be Neo. Or the Oracle. One of the two. The most mysterious book in the world. The most mysterious book in the world is a title often given to the Voynich Manuscript, mm. an ancient book filled with writings in a language or code that no one has been able to crack. It's named after Wilfred Voynich, a Polish book dealer who purchased it in 1912. However, the manuscript is believed to be from the 15th century, and it's packed with bizarre illustrations of unknown plants, astronomical diagrams, and strange human figures. What's more, the language used in the Voynich manuscript is unlike anything we've ever seen. Experts in linguistics and cartography have been scratching their heads over this for years, trying to decipher it, but so far, no luck. And the illustrations are just as puzzling. The plants don't match any known species and the astronomical diagrams don't align with any known constellations. It's like this manuscript is a window into another world, or a lost knowledge that we can't quite grasp. Number 10. Or it could be a bunch of nothing. Absolutely nothing. Just him doodling up on a page and drawing. You know what I mean? A lot of what we used to do in school, when you were sitting there and your mind then drifted off from what the teacher was saying, so you just start jotting stuff down in a notebook. Then that... that a quarter way down the page, you just randomly just start drawing things. I did it all the time, so it could be nothing. I hope that's not the case, but it reminded me of school seeing that. Howard Menger. In the 1950s, a fascinating tale unfolded in the small town of Highbridge, New Jersey, turning it into a hotspot for alien enthusiasts, much like Roswell in New Mexico. The central figure of this story is Howard Menger, a man who claims contact with extraterrestrials. Howard Menger, who lived from February 17, 1922 to February 25, 2009, positioned himself as a contactee, a term used for individuals who claim to have encountered friendly aliens and even taken rides in their UFOs. In fact, he even wrote books about it. He and his wife Connie described their encounters as primarily positive and pleasant, deviating from the more ominous and mysterious tones often associated with UFO sightings. I'll let you be the verdict on whether Menger's experiences are indeed authentic. Number 9. The Russian UFO Tooth Wheel In a coal mine in the Ukrainian city of Donetsk, miners came across something baffling. Buried deep within the earth, at about 3,000 feet, they found a curious artifact, a wheel that appeared to be made of metal. But this was no ordinary wheel. What set it apart was its supposed age an astonishing 300 million years. Sheesh. How could such an object, seemingly a product of advanced engineering, exist so long ago? This question has stumped many and fueled wild speculations. How could this metal that was deliberately made exist 300 million years ago, a time when humans didn't exist on Earth to begin with? Could it be a sign of extraterrestrials? Or a race that lived here before us and left? To this day, this metal piece is still considered just a misplaced piece of metal, but some continue to believe it was left behind by extraterrestrials who visited us millions of years ago. Number eight. When you can't explain it, you blame aliens. That's, <laughs> that's our formula. That's our pedigree. The Obeyed Lizard Men. The story of the Obeyed Lizard Men oh. takes us back to the excavations at Ur from 1929 to 1930. Here, archaeologists unearthed clay figurines from the Alubaid II period, 
the pre-Sumerian era in ancient Mesopotamia. What makes them stand out are their distinct lizard-like features, depicting humanoid yes. bodies with reptilian characteristics. They were found in various positions, including male and female forms, and their precise purpose or symbolism remains a mystery to this day. What's fascinating about these figurines is that they don't seem to fit into the conventional understanding of religious or ritualistic artifacts of that time. Are They're they holding an animal? Y'all see that? It's like he's cradling or holding either a baby of his or an animal or something. Oh, I'm thinking it's a baby. This is crazy. I've never seen this before. Their postures, including a female figure feeding their young, suggest a different purpose perhaps more mundane or even domestic. This ambiguity in their interpretation has left many questions unanswered about what these Ubaid lizardmen represent. The Ubaid period, named after the Tell All Ubaid archaeological site where these artifacts were found, is recognized as a significant era in Mesopotamian history. It predates the well-known Sumerian civilization and is noted for its advancements in city construction and temple building. Number seven. We need to figure that era out. We need to go back and, and go First of all, where did they locate this at? And we need to start digging and see what else we come across that's similar to this and trace it back to that time and figure out what was going on. I need explanations for that because we've heard the conspiracy theories about reptilian people and different things like that. Now, you might have been on the fence about it until you saw that just then and it might, you know what I mean, <laughs> bring you off that fence a little bit. Alleged UFO crash in Antarctica. In the vast icy expanse of Antarctica, a peculiar image captured on Google Earth sparked speculation among UFO enthusiasts. This intriguing case centers around South Georgia Island, located off the coast of Antarctica and the Atlantic Ocean. Here, a satellite photo revealed something unusual, a long, cigar-shaped object that appeared to have slid across the snow, leaving a distinct trail behind it. This image quickly caught the attention of alien hunters and UFO researchers. Some claimed that this object, estimated to be about 160 feet long, was a crashed extraterrestrial craft. The narrative suggested that the object had collided with the side of a mountain on South Georgia Island before sliding across the icy surface, creating a noticeable track in its wake. This theory was fueled by narrations on other popular conspiracy channels where commentators speculated about the possibility of a UFO crash landing on the snowy surface below. But with its location, it's impossible to immediately physically travel to the alleged wreck just to verify whether the satellite really did capture an alien mothership in the snow. I guess it's still impossible to verify that the mysterious object in the satellite image is a spacecraft from another world. But conspiracists believe that Antarctica, being one of the most isolated places on our planet, could be a spot where extraterrestrials visit to gather more information about Earth. I know just how outlandish this sounds, so perhaps we should take these theories with a pinch of skepticism. Number 6. Antikythera Mechanism World's first computer right there. Antikythera Mechanism an ancient device of Greek origin is a marvel of engineering that predates known advancements by centuries. Discovered in a shipwreck near the small Greek island of Antikythera, this device has been dated to around the 2nd century BCE. It's essentially an ancient analog computer used to predict astronomical positions, the movement of the planets, and the dates of future solar eclipses. This mechanism, containing 30 metal gears, worked harmoniously to calculate and display information about astronomical phenomena, making it the first known example of such a complex mechanism. The sophistication of the Antikythera mechanism was so advanced for its time that it's led some to speculate about its origins. It's been suggested by pseudo-archaeologists that this device was not the work of ancient Greeks, but rather the product of a more advanced civilization, possibly extraterrestrial in origin. This theory suggests that extraterrestrials or individuals from the future may have introduced this device to Earth as a hint of their presence. However, mainstream historians and archaeologists have primarily dismissed this theory. After all, our ancestors have proven time and time again that they were capable of more than what we initially expected of them. But who knows? This brilliance just might have been assisted by something not from our world. Number 5. Maybe we already know that that's a computer system and they just don't want to tell us because then that, that changes the whole dynamic. They will have been more advanced than, than us. 
They would have been. That changes everything. We find out or have found out that that's a computer. That's a game changer, man. Mysterious zigzag patterns in the desert. In 2011, users of Google Earth and Google Maps stumbled upon an unusual site, zigzagging white lines creating intricate grid patterns in the desert. These peculiar formations sparked widespread speculation. For a time, many believed these were messages from extraterrestrials, given their precise and unnatural appearance. However, some experts claim that there's a high possibility the strange markings were man-made. After all, the patterns are reminiscent of a site used as calibration targets for spy satellites. Now, I don't know which one is more disturbing, a message from aliens or solid proof of spy satellites being operated by not one, but most likely several countries. However, if the latter is true, the presence of such large targets in the Gobi Desert also suggested that China's spy satellite cameras might have relatively poor resolution, as one target was estimated to be about 0.65 miles wide and 1.15 miles long. So is this just a cover-up story to hide that the aliens have indeed been trying to communicate with us? I'll let you be the judge of that. Number 4. Man Being Targeted by Aliens What? Meet Radovok Lajic, a 50-year-old man who claims to have experienced something truly out of this world. His tale? Being targeted by aliens through a series of meteorite strikes on his house. It sounds outlandish, but once you hear his story, it does make sense why he would think he was being attacked. This bizarre saga began in 2007, and by July 2010, Logic's house had been hit by meteorites not once, not twice, but six times. Each strike added to his conviction that extraterrestrials were somehow involved. The odds of a house getting hit by a meteorite once are slim, exactly. let alone six times. The rocks that bombarded his house were indeed confirmed to be meteorites by experts at Belgrade University. How could a single house be the target of so many meteor strikes in such a short time? For this reason, the man began to believe that extraterrestrials were targeting him. While the idea of aliens targeting a house with meteorites might have sound far-fetched, it surely did make it sound like it was indeed possible that extraterrestrials had some sort of issue with him. On the brighter side, at least he made a bit of money by selling those meteorites. Researchers examined why? the magnetic field surrounding the area in an attempt to understand why meteorite impacts were happening so frequently, but their questions were never answered. Number three. Yo, buddy had Willy Wonka's golden ticket, bro. I hope he didn't sell all of them. If he sold all of them, man. Bro, I, that was his golden ticket right there, fam. I, I don't blame him either for feeling like aliens or something is targeting me, bro. Who, who else house getting hit this many times by meteors? Something got, it, some type of explanation got to go with it. I, I don't know, fam. I hope he moved and I hope he didn't sell all of those. Three, Tehran UFO incident. In the early morning hours of September 19, 1976, something extraordinary unfolded in the skies over Tehran, the capital city of Iran. Just after midnight, the Iranian Air Force command post at Maribad International Airport started receiving a flurry of phone calls. People were reporting strange objects in the sky. Descriptions varied, with some saying the object appeared bird-like, while others likened it to a helicopter with an unusually bright light. What made the Tehran UFO incident particularly remarkable is the combination of radar and visual sightings. This wasn't just a case of a few scattered reports from the public. Two experienced Iranian Air Force pilots visually confirmed the UFO, and radar signatures were picked up by air traffic and control towers. But it did But we, we clearly know that's still not enough. That's still not enough, bro. You know what I mean? How many pilots have come forth, given information, all this type of stuff, and it seems to be still not enough and stop there as two f4 phantom 2 jet interceptors approached the unidentified object they began experiencing significant malfunctions their instrumentation and communication systems started to fail this wasn't an isolated occurrence both jets reported these issues as they approached the ufo however as soon as they withdrew from the object their systems returned to normal functioning. The Tehran UFO incident stands out as one of the most well-documented and disturbing UFO sightings in history. And so, many continue to believe that the country was indeed visited by extraterrestrials back then. However, no further concrete evidence could be recovered to support this story. 
Number two. The what other evidence do you need? Dogo figurines. The Dogo figurines, unearthed from various sites across Japan, are similar to the obeyed lizard men. Just like the former, it began speculations of extraterrestrials visiting and even living amongst humans a long time ago. Dating back to the Jomon period, around 14,000 to 300 BCE, these clay figures are known for their distinctive, almost otherworldly appearance. Many of the Dogu have large goggle-like eyes, tiny waists, and intricate patterns across their bodies, leading to a plethora of interpretations about their purpose and symbolism. These enigmatic figurines have captured the imagination of many, with some even suggesting that they represent beings from another world. While experts explain that the bizarre features might be creative or just headgear, these figurines prove that alien life existed on our planet. And now it's time for today's topic. Existed. You're looking at one Still of the most exists. concerning objects that are not from this planet. A man discovered this wreck in the middle of barren land. He claimed that he stumbled upon the massive wreck while flying his drone. He couldn't believe his eyes when he went into the site and saw what looked like the damaged wreck of a massive satellite or a rocket. Perturbed but excited, he went around the wreck and observed. He took photos, returned home, and immediately posted about what he found. But when he returned, the mysterious wreck was nowhere to be found. Now, and he was probably visited by the men in black. Who knows? Was it an alien shipwreck? Or was it a secret that a powerful institution wanted to desperately cover up? Any theories? Number 1. Mysterious Pipe System Located in China's Qinghai province, the Baigong pipes are a series of pipe-like features found in and around Mount Baigong. These pipes are made of iron and are of varying sizes, some as small as a toothpick, while others are large enough to walk through. What makes them so intriguing is their age and arrangement. They're believed to be thousands of years old, and some of them are arranged in what appears to be a purposeful pattern. Now, when they were first discovered, people were baffled. How did these pipes get here? Were they naturally formed? Or are we looking at evidence of an ancient advanced civilization that we know nothing about? Some suggested that these pipes were part of an ancient irrigation system, or prehistoric construction. But here's where it gets wild. Some even went as far as to suggest that these could be evidence of an ancient visitation by extraterrestrial beings. However, let's bring in some science. Geologists have studied the bygone pipes and have come up with explanations that are a bit more down to earth. One theory is that these pipes are actually fossilized tree roots. Over time, the organic material of the roots could have been replaced by minerals, creating tubular pipe-like structures. Another possibility is that they could result from natural iron-rich water flowing through the sediment, solidifying into these pipe shapes. But despite these scientific explanations, these pipes continue to capture the interest of conspiracists. If you think we missed another discovery, feel free to share in the comments down below. Also, check out our other- Yeah, I think what got me was those uh, reptilian looking statues, bro. Like I want to, I want to hear more about those and go in a little bit further in depth about that, man. Like I said, origin, what it could potentially mean, what they think, what scientists have come to conclude about those statues and different things like that, man. Because like I said, we've been hearing the conspiracy theories, but that's the first time I've seen something like that. Listen, man, y'all get at me in the comment section. Let me know what you thought of this video, bro. And uh, stick around and stay tuned, man. Till next time, I'm gone.